Hey, I'm Braxton from Team 70407R Refraction, and this is an explanation of our state's frog mech robot, which you can see there. It's a, basically a pistonized fish mech, for those who don't know. Um, and so this was our state's robot, but we've been running this design. We came up with it back in October. So we've been running it for a while. Um, we are switching away for it from it from for Worlds, though, so... Uh, we'll talk about a little bit why we're doing that, um, and but more specifically, we just want to go over some of the creative features of this robot. Starting with the drivetrain, um, it is 480 RPM, 200, uh, 2.75 inch wheels. Uh, we got the tracking wheels right here, which uh, for some reason gave us uh, a lot of issues at states. Like some of these, they would like get bent and stuff and like dig into the tiles of the field they would like wobble around a little bit um and yeah so that like caused us issues at states even though we uh had brought them with the same configuration to previous tournaments and they gave us no issues like they were decently accurate we scored a uh 56 programming skills with them uh at a tournament two weeks ago and yet they um I don't know. So I what I would recommend and what we're probably going to do is we're going to focus on doing uh, 2.75 inch tracking wheels instead. Uh, just because these smaller wheels just like um, didn't really work very well for us. Uh, inertial sensor is down up in here. Um, we had uh, two more motors double stacked at the back of the robot. And then we had these little... Um, these ball bearings and so these kind of like uh helped us with anti-tipping so uh because our front our robot is very front heavy and so these helped us just like not kind of tip forward while we were driving a lot so those were really useful uh moving on to the goal clamp so it's just pretty simple two prongs uh it can clamp either uh either direction like that or like that so we strongly preferred the flat side though just because sometimes it would get like a little lob side in the clamp with the diagonal part we had these to kind of just help align stuff um and they've got the little uh plastic things on top of them because uh we noticed in practice that the goal could sometimes get like hooked underneath these um so just to prevent that we uh added these little plastic parts on top uh we used the longer 50 milliliter 50 millimeter inches i know 50 milliliter millimeter pistons uh i know a lot of people use the 25 millimeter ones uh we the reason why we did these is because we actually did use like a bit longer of stroke length for that just to uh um, because a we could like just have like our clamp go up higher and so like we could try to steal from anyone who um who was like already grabbed onto the goal and that actually was somewhat useful in matches so it was nice and the goal would sit on this plastic piece right here that's what this is for um some teams also like th this might turn some teams off because they're because they're like oh well you can get a ring stuck in the clamp like i've seen that happen to teams at like signature events and stuff and so ours is nice because like it could just slide right out like it's high enough for that um so that never really was an issue for us um yeah moving on we can start talking about the intake so it's a split intake which is actually for this design extremely necessary uh each 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 part of the intake is 11 watts so you've got this front part right here with the two stages of flex wheels and then this top part with the hooks that has the motor down in here um so to start with the front stage uh the motor spins up here this part spins at 600 rpm and this bottom stage spins at 1200 rpm uh this didn't actually make our pickup insane like a lot of other teams would think it would like it was just like it was all right um and the chain is tensioned with this like tensioner right here that we use light latex tubing to pull up on it with um 
And then we have these little um, curved plastic pieces that just like naturally curved with the way we did them. So this ramp, the way we did this ramp was actually like pretty nice. Uh, we didn't really have many issues with that. We have our aligner right here with a bunch of labels on it talking about Maharshi, who's our uh, the head ref at our state championship. So he's goaded. Um, and then for the hook stage, uh, this one, we, uh, the motor's just down in here. And it's a very, like, short hook stage just because this part was longer. Um, yeah, we just used the small wheels. Um, we have these for, like, um, for, uh, to make sure that the hooks wouldn't get caught on the goal when it has, like, five or six rings on it uh, so I can demo the intake now like just going all the way just like that it was pretty fast pretty good intake um, but more importantly what this intake was good at for being a split intake is it allowed us to do um, a really cool controller macro so we have this distance sensor right here that um, basically when I hold a different button on the intake it'll um, It'll just intake until it gets to that sensor and then these hooks will automatically stop. But notice that if I keep holding that button, um, the, the bottom part will still keep running. And so I can just add the other ring. And now we've got two rings like primed and ready to score for wall stakes. So that was super nice just to get us ready to score wall stakes. Like it was, um, it made this like wall stake mech design like extremely good. Um, like no worse than Lady Brown in terms of like getting rings ready to score. Uh, so that was nice. And we also ran color sorting on this intake. So uh, we did something that I honestly, I'm surprised I haven't seen a lot of other teams be doing. And that is we have our uh, optical sensor right here and it's staring at this yellow block. So it is constantly reading like the color yellow, uh, which is the, on a, if you know colors on a color wheel, it's like the, furthest from blue and red that's pretty common knowledge and so um basically it um it there's like a biggest a bigger jump in hue values when the color when the sensor reads either blue or red if a ring comes in front of it and so that was um very helpful and it made our color sensing really efficient and autonomous so yeah that's about it for the intake we had two tanks in the back here this tank was entirely for the wall stake mech, which is what I'll go over next. And this tank covered literally everything else in the robot. And we had like something like, I think 10 pistons. Um, so uh, this one covered like all the other ones. And this one just dealt with the wall stake mech just to make sure that we had enough air for wall stakes and stuff. Um, so yeah, moving on to the wall stake mech. You've got the pistons right here. Uh, these ones have to be the longer uh, 75 millimeter pistons. Um, I promise you, you're not going to be able to make anything like this work if you use shorter pistons. Um, and basically they just push up on the mech. They're just directly connected to them. Uh, and then we've got a bunch of standoffs up here. So these ones, they just kind of like help guide the goal, the, the ring like down onto the wall stake mech. These ones like, or down onto the wall stake these ones just control like the left and right movement. And then these ones like kind of act as like a trap door. So when we're intake ignoring, the ring will push uh, these, the standoff up uh, and then they go down below it. And then now it's like ready, like now it'll grab the ring really efficiently. So that's how our well stake mech worked. Um, it was pretty good because uh, well, we, when we were able to uh, use pistons for it, uh, it made, um, it made it faster than a lot of the late rounds were. So we could just quickly drive up to a wall stake and then press, uh, this button and it would just score the ring really fast, really efficiently. So that was nice. So the reason why we're switching to lady Brown for worlds is because, uh, this wall stake mech was purely for wall stakes. So you couldn't do like what a regular... 360 Lady Brown could do like you couldn't tip over goals you couldn't um you could score an alliance stake with this um like not not the way uh 360 Lady Brown works uh 
But basically in autonomous, we would put our preload right in here and then just tilt it up. And that was actually really consistent. So that was nice, but yeah, just it's just a lot more limiting um, in terms of design. So we mounted our hang on the back of the robot. Um, we originally wanted to do something similar to how a lot of the Lady Round robots do it with like it being mounted on this tower. The reason why we had to do it back here is because um, our center of gravity was kind of close to the front. We just didn't build it that well. And so um, we found that the robot would actually just kind of tip over instead of actually getting on top of the hang bar. But if you, if you build your hang where it's coming from the direction that your center of gravity is not on, then that kind of helps. So um, when we put these up with the pistons, it, uh, it it just gave us a really nice, like, consistent hang that we could trust. And, like, we we hung, we were able to hang, like, pretty high off the ground. Uh, we hung a little extra high for the Odom meal so that they could come down. But, yeah, so um, that was really just to uh, maximize the efficiency of the hang. But uh, it did, it didn't wasn't that great for weight. I mean, we did have, like, these bigger plastic pieces. So these, like... Um, and the only reason why it's like a little bouncy is because it's under tension, but these, uh, helped to save a little bit of weight for this, but either way, it just like wasn't the greatest and it used up uh, pistons and stuff. Uh, so we have this classic, uh, doinker that, uh, also is like a grabber on the end. So, uh, we sold this grabber design from 2502X, who's a team in our region. They're goaded. Um, basically it's got these little hooks on the bottom and so it would, it could, those would like, I'm too far away from you. Okay. Those could grab, uh, the, like the under, under the lip of the goal. And then like the, the small piston on top would just like, uh, would just push down on it. So like, like so. And so that was really good because A, it kind of like, it was really good at tilting this part up on the goal. And then like, it made it really hard to steal from this because um, like it was, it like the hooks were like really deep inside of it. So that was good. Um, the, the idea was that hopefully this would also be really good at stealing from opponent's clamps. But, like, sometimes this guy wouldn't go down all the way. Um, and so that just made it not quite as good. But, yeah, you know. Uh, we also had a gold tipper. So there's just, like, this little stick that we put out. Um, and we could turn, which I'm not going to try to do driving with one hand. But we could turn and it tip over the goal. Uh, and then we could also... We could also try to untip goals like with this little standoff on the end here. So I could do that and then we could just drive back and it tip the goal back upright. Um, but this definitely wasn't as efficient as some of the 360 Lady Browns in terms of like tipping over goals, which is why we're switching. But yeah, we did, this was just, the only reason why we added this was just because uh, we were being limited by our wall stick map. So, uh, yeah, that about covers the robot, I think. Um, I don't think there's anything else to talk about. So, yeah, uh, see, see you at Worlds. Uh, good luck.